we're going to turn this. I mean, let's just give it a few bashes, shall we? Into the strongest glue I've ever used. I'll tell you what, it's not, it's not budging. This stuff is seriously strong. Right, we are back. And I've been asked this question quite a lot throughout my channel history. And that is, what do I use to glue my pieces together? Let's say my resin into my, my bezels. Now, I've, I've done this a few times. Uh, I have to say, it, obviously it does come with risks. This, what I'm gonna be using is a thinner for polyurethane. It's fairly cheap. You can do this with 100% acetone. It does have to be 100% acetone, but the risks, you really do need to do this ideally outside or with your mask on because this stuff, it does give off some fumes, especially when you add the polystyrene. Now, you can't recycle polystyrene, but you kind of can by doing this. This is nothing new. Other channels have done this and shown this before. You are going to need a glass jar not plastic very very important because acetone or the the thinner for polyurethane will dissolve the plastic so and the good thing about this is that you can use it pretty much instantly there's there's no waiting you just need to you can make you can batch make as much glue as you want this stuff is seriously strong i have used pretty much every glue that's available on the market over time i've tried the epoxy glues i've tried e6000 plus which is a really, really good glue, but nothing comes close to this stuff. You're also going to want one of these. It's going to get messy. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to breathe in that stuff and, 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 and go weird and funny and, and potentially pass out. <laughs> I'm going to mask up and go into voiceover mode. But talking about this stuff again, even food packaging, takeaway um, packaging you can use lots of different types of polystyrene you can use in this glue i'd say there's about 20 mil i pour into my jar and this is quite fun to watch i'm going to dip in and out of voiceover And just like that, it's vanished. <laughs> so I just keep adding and adding and adding until I can't add any more, really. I'm not going to lie, I did get a little bit stressed out with the polystyrene sticking to my gloves. You will see that shortly. I don't like things sticking to my hands, especially glitter or polystyrene. Yeah, it stressed me out and I hadn't even finished adding my polystyrene. I wanted it off my hands. So I then carry on just adding more and more and getting more on my gloves. <laughs> it does start to get really thick, so I have to apply some pressure and my stick broke. But I just carry on. There's no point changing the stick now. <laughs> We're almost done now. It's just tossing and turning the last pieces until we're left with a really gooey glue. Okay, so what we are left with is a really thick. And I know what you're thinking, but there's not much there. What's happened during that process is most of the, the, the thinners have evaporated. Now, don't get me wrong, this still is a strong smelling glue. But most of it has evaporated during the dissolving process. And this is mostly melted polyurethane. Not polyurethane, poly polystyrene. <laughs> we get there in the end. But you saw how much polystyrene that took. I mean, it, it's incredible. It just keeps going and going and going. And just when you think you can't add any more, you, you still can. 
But what I like to do is just go until, keep going until the glue is a really stringy and sticky consistency. And that's going to be a really strong glue. The more you add, the stronger the glue is going to be. Now, I mean, can you imagine if you was to do, a, you know, like a, <laughs> a much larger amount? You'd, you'd be there for a very, very long time. So I would suggest doing it kind of smaller amounts. Make as much as you need and then you can always make more because otherwise you are going to be there all day just adding more <laughs> and more polystyrene. So let's put this to the test. You do also want to make sure it's an airtight jar because otherwise it's just going to go hard inside the jar. Now I'm going to glue this resin cabochon that I made into this bezel. Now I have done this without scoring and I've done some strength tests and it, it really doesn't come out, but you can score the back of the piece to make a better bond. Or you can also roughen the back up with some sandpaper. But this stuff would be excellent for, as like a wood glue or lots of other crafting glues um, that you might need a really strong adhesive for. So all I'm going to do is just take out my stick and just rub that over the whole bezel like so as always massive shout out to my channel members anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks and to any new subs almost 90,000 subscribers now which is absolutely incredible thank you very very much I'm also going to apply some to the back of this cabochon and I'm just going to leave it a minute before bonding the two together Then I can just place that onto the bezel, make sure it's centered. I've intentionally picked one. I want a gap around the outside, just so that when it's dry, I can show you, I'm gonna try and leave that out, just to show you how strong it is. And it is important to make sure that the cabochon is flat on the back. If you need to take off the, the raised edges, take them off because you're going to lose strength otherwise. And just leave that to dry. Now, the drying time can depend on just how thick that you've made your glue. Some of mine have dried in a few hours. Some have taken 24 hours, but I would recommend 24 hours just to be, you know, 100%, because you don't want to send that out in the post or something and it gets knocked around and it it just the glue could ooze out or the piece could fall out so yeah we'll be back when that's dry i'm also gonna glue a couple of these stirring sticks together just to show you what it's like with wood also and then just stick them together Again, make sure your lid is on fully tight on your jar. Okay, so it is actually the following day. Now, before I left the studio last night, I did have a little wiggle around with them and they were actually setting really nicely. There was still some movement with the stone and the stick. So what I did was I just rested something heavy on them just to push them down just in case there's any kind of trap bubbles in there. But, I mean, you can see if I tilt the tilt the jar, the glue will start to run down. So it's not it's not setting inside the jar, but again, it is important to make sure it is really sealed. You can see it's starting to ooze down now. But a little does go a long way. Let's start with a stick. I mean, I'm not a pro at strength tests. <laughs> um, but w w what we're using it for ideally is, is this. I mean, it you're not really going to be trying to prise the stones out. I mean, the worst case scenario, you're going to, you're going to drop it and it's, uh, but I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll try and prise it out and just see, but the sticks, I'm going to try and pull them apart. I can't, I can't pull them apart. It is really, really strong glue. 
So if I was to try and bend them like that, I think it would give away quite easily. So I'm going to try and bend it this way and just see if I can get them to separate. You can see the flex on that. <laughs> My whole desk is shaking. I can't separate them bending it that way. Let's just try. I think the sticks are going to give away, not the glue. So there you go. It is. <laughs> it's extremely strong for for what it is and what it's made of. Let's try the cabochon. I mean, this is what what we're here for. Kind of an ideal glue. It's quick and easy. In the long run, I've probably got the quantity that's inside a tube of uh, an expensive glue in this jar. Might not look like it, but there is quite a bit in there. For the cost wise, I mean, you're only paying really for the thinner, or if you do it with the acetone, the acetone. Again, just be extremely safe. How do I test this um, properly? I mean, let's just give it a few bashes, shall we? I mean, you're not really gonna put that force it's not really going to happen when you're dropping, say, something like this that's glued into a bezel. I think with enough leverage, though, it could potentially lift out. And I'm only using a stick because there is quite a, a high amount of leverage on this. And it's not moving. I think I need to try something stronger just to, just to show you the force it takes to to lift this out. So I've just got a metal file. Now this is definitely, I think it's definitely gonna pull it out for sure, but who's gonna be doing that? I don't wanna damage the cab because it isn't really nice. Oh, you hear that crunch? <laughs> I think I've just really damaged the cab. I tell you what, it's not, it's not budging. I think I might. I don't want to put too much force in this, guys, because I don't want to damage this. But it's not budging. So I think that just shows how strong this stuff is. You can just start hearing it cracking. That's with a lot of leverage. Can I pull that out? Cool. It's taken a lot of, <laughs> a lot of force to get that out, guys. It really has. There you have the strong glue, fully dry. Successful experiment. Again, other channels have shown this in the past. I just think this is ideal for what we do with resin art and for what we need it. Again, be safe. Do it outside, do it in the garage, wear your mask. But you saw how little of this I needed. And this is a whopping great bottle. And a polystyrene, you get free. <laughs> you could probably walk down the street and find some flying around. We do here in South End, in England, bits of random polystyrene flying, flying down the road on bin day. <laughs> on a windy day. But there you go, guys. As always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment. If you haven't subbed, hit that button for me, and I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.